Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, let us discuss about one of the important metabolic pathways that is citric acid cycle. This citric acid cycle is also called as TCA. Here TCA stands for tricarboxylic acid. I'll tell you why we call this cycle as TCA. Moreover, this citric acid cycle is also called as Krebs cycle because this citric acid cycle was proposed by Hans Krebs. Due to his contributions, this pathway is also called as Krebs cycle. In my previous video, we have discussed about glycolysis, right? Where the sugar glucose is broken down by a series of steps giving rise to an end product of pyruvate, right? And that so formed pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA by the action of an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. So this is the linking step between the glycolysis and the TCA cycle, right? So if you observe the pathway here, the intermediate citrate is formed. So that is the reason we are calling this cycle as tricarboxylic acid cycle. Just look at the structure here. 1, 2, 3. It contains 3 carboxyl groups. So that is the reason we are calling it as a tricarboxylic acid cycle. Glycolysis is a pathway that operates both under aerobic and under anaerobic conditions. right? That is in presence of oxygen and in absence of oxygen. But this pathway operates only under aerobic conditions. That means only in the presence of oxygen. This is one of the important metabolic pathways for the energy supply to the body. About 65 to 70% of ATP is synthesized by this pathway. I already mentioned that this pathway operates under aerobic conditions, right? Generally what we do, we are going to consume oxygen and release carbon dioxide, right? So that consumed oxygen is utilized by this pathway. Generally two-thirds of the oxygen is utilized by this pathway. Look at the picture carefully. This Krebs cycle is a cyclic process that operates under aerobic conditions that is in presence of oxygen. Moreover, the enzymes that are responsible for carrying out this pathway are present in mitochondrial matrix. So this pathway takes place in mitochondria. Whereas the glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm because the enzymes that are required to carry out the glycolysis are present in cytosomal fraction of a cell. And the glycolysis pathway takes place in cytoplasm. Whereas coming to the TCA cycle, this pathway especially takes place in mitochondria. As I already told you that the pyruvate is the end product of glycolysis. So this so formed pyruvate is converted to acetyl-CoA by the action of an enzyme called pyruvate dehydrogenase. So this is the connecting link between the glycolysis and the TCA cycle. If you look at the picture, it seems to be like a heavy traffic on a national highway. There will be a formation of many intermediates in this pathway and this so formed intermediates will participate in the other pathways. Now let us discuss about the steps that are involved in the TCA cycle. The first step starts with the formation of an intermediate called citrate. So this is a very important intermediate of this pathway. As the citrate is formed here, we are calling this cycle as citric acid cycle. The very first step of TCA cycle is the formation of 6 carbon compound called citrate. This citrate is formed by the condensation of 2 carbon compound acetyl-CoA and a 4 carbon compound oxaloacetate giving rise to citrate right and this is an irreversible reaction. Here the acetyl-CoA molecule will transfer its acetyl group to oxaloacetate giving rise to citrate with the release of CoA and the CoA is released which can react with more pyruvate. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called citrate synthase. The second important step of TCA cycle is dehydration. What is meant by dehydration? Removal of water molecule, right? See, observe the picture here. With the removal of water molecule from the citrate, it leads to a formation of another intermediate called cis-aconitate. And this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called aconitase. This so formed cis-aconitate again will undergo the process of hydration. 
so earlier there will be a dehydration step followed by the step of hydration again it will take up one water molecule under the influence of the same enzyme aconitase giving rise to isocitrate which is an isomerization step clear so what is the first step first step is the formation of the citrate second step is the dehydration that is with the removal of water molecule by the action of enzyme aconitase citrate will be converted to cis aconitate this cis aconitate will again undergo the process of hydration that is with the addition of the water molecule again by the influence of the same enzyme aconitase this cis aconitate will be converted to isocitrate which is the third step of this pathway this isocitrate will undergo the process of dehydrogenation by the action of an enzyme called isocitrate dehydrogenase giving rise to a compound called oxalosuccinate here in the step of dehydrogenation there will be a removal of hydrogen molecules right those two hydrogen molecules were accepted by nad plus giving rise to nadh plus h plus the step of dehydrogenation is followed by decarboxylation that means removal of carbon dioxide from this six carbon compound oxalosuccinate giving rise to a five carbon compound called alpha ketoglutarate this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called carboxylase this so formed alpha ketoglutarate will undergo simultaneous decarboxylation and dehydrogenation it will combine with the coenzyme a giving rise to succinyl coa as i told you that this compound will undergo decarboxylation and dehydrogenation there will be a removal of carbon dioxide and there will be a removal of two hydrogen atoms right those two hydrogen atoms were accepted by nad plus giving rise to nadh plus h plus the next step of the pathway is phosphorylation here succinyl coa is the compound formed right succinate will be released from this succinyl coa by the catalytic action of an enzyme called succinate thiokinase this reaction requires gdp or idp gdp stands for guanosine diphosphate so this gdp will undergo the process of phosphorylation what is meant by phosphorylation addition of phosphate group right now this gdp contains two phosphate groups gdp guanosine diphosphate it contains two phosphate groups so after this step of phosphorylation one more phosphate group will be added so this gdp will be converted to gtp guanosine triphosphate observe the picture carefully here see this coa group is released so succinate will be released from the succinyl coa so what is the enzyme responsible here succinate thiokinase so here gdp is utilized for the reaction after the phosphorylation of gdp it is converted to gtp this so formed succinate will again undergo the process of dehydrogenation by the action of an enzyme called succinate dehydrogenase giving rise to a compound called fumarate as it is a step of dehydrogenation those released hydrogen atoms will be transferred directly to flavoprotein flavoprotein contains fad right fad stands for flavin adenine dinucleotide so after the acceptance of hydrogen atoms by fad it will be converted to fadh2 this fumarate again will undergo the step of dehydration see observe the picture here removal of water molecule is nothing but dehydration when this fumarate undergo the process of dehydration it gives rise to a compound called malate and this reaction is catalyzed by an enzyme called fumarase coming to the final step of this pathway this so formed malate is transformed to oxaloacetate by the action of an enzyme called malate dehydrogenase and those hydrogen atoms were accepted by nad plus giving rise to nadh plus h plus once the oxaloacetate is formed it can again condense with another molecule of acetyl coa giving rise to citrate again so this is how the pathway will continue that is the reason i mentioned that this pathway is a cyclic process coming to the regulation of this pathway cellular demands of atp plays a very important role in controlling this pathway and moreover some of the important enzymes of this pathway are citrate synthase isocitrate dehydrogenase and alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase 
regulation of this pathway is also brought about by the inhibition of this enzymes when these enzymes are inhibited there will be no formation of intermediates right coming to the first enzyme that is citrate synthase this enzyme is inhibited by atp nadh acetyl coa and succinyl coa when this enzyme citrate synthase is inhibited then there will be no formation of a compound citrate right coming to the second important enzyme of this pathway that is isocitrate dehydrogenase this enzyme is activated by adp whereas inhibited by atp and nadh and the third important enzyme that is alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase this enzyme is inhibited by succinyl coa and nadh coming to the other important regulatory step of tca cycle that is availability of adp this availability of adp plays a very important role for a tca cycle to proceed with in absence of this adp that means when there is no sufficient amount of this adp then there will be no oxidation of nadh and fadh2 through electron transport chain if there is no oxidation what happens there will be an accumulation of this compounds that is nadh and fadh2 accumulation of nadh and fadh2 will leads to inhibition of enzymes and also limits the supply of nad plus and fad which are very essential for a tca cycle to proceed with this is all about the tca cycle and its regulation soon i'll come up with my next video thank you so much